everyone. I wanted to share with you this Excel spreadsheet that I created in order to help me calculate both weight and balance as well as takeoff and landing distances. I will provide this as a downloadable Excel file so that you can go in and actually edit these numbers and use them the same way that I have. Many of the cells on this spreadsheet are auto-calculated, so if you enter in only certain ones, it'll actually create for you a calculation without having to do a lot of extra work, and I'll show you how that works. So for this spreadsheet, this is actually for a 1969 Cessna Skyhawk 172K model. Um, what I initially did was entered in these three numbers here from the weight and balance sheet for the airplane weight, arm, and moment. In addition to that, I needed to find the arm for each one of the stations on the actual airplane. So I pulled this image down below here from the POH, and I'll zoom in so you can see it. This is a typical image you might see in a, in a POH for a Cessna 172, and it's gonna show you exactly the arms for each one of those stations. So that's where I got that information. So once you've entered in all of this information as well as the weight arm and moment for the entire plane at empty weight, you pretty much have yourself set up for using this spreadsheet. With one exception, you also need to add in down here the max gross weight. So all of that information you can find from your POH. From there, if you want to use this on a regular basis for each one of your flights, I've highlighted the specific cells that you're going to want to change in order for that to be possible. You really shouldn't have to change any of the other cells in order to get the correct information because everything else is going to calculate for you. If you put in here 38 gallons of gas, this will automatically calculate your weight for that many gallons. And as we know, one gallon equals six pounds, as you can see right here. And this is an equation that basically takes your 38 um, gallons and multiplies it times six in order to get 228. Excuse me. So after that, you're going to want to enter in your pilot, your co-pilot, and your passengers and your baggage, the weight for each one of those. Over here, each one of these cells is going to then automatically calculate by multiplying your weight times your arm, which we know equals our moment. So those will automatically, for all of these cells, excuse me, for all of these cells, will automatically calculate the moment for you. So you don't have to do any of that work. Now you're going to have your total weight that will be a, a sum of that whole row, total takeoff weight, and it's also going to calculate your total moment um, at takeoff by basically adding up those cells and dividing by a thousand. I've also put in here an equation so that you can see what your center of gravity will be. That again is an equation and it's going to take your moment and dividing and divide your weight by it. So now we know what our takeoff weight and moment is, but we also want to know what our landing weight is. So the other thing you're going to want to enter is how much fuel you believe you're going to be burning during that flight. So that's one last thing you need to enter. This will automatically subtract your weight as well as your moment and give you your new um, numbers for landing weight. I also put one extra line in here and it has to do with empty weight. So if you happen to be flying and you come across an emergency, and you need to be using more than 17 gallons of gas, maybe all whipped, maybe even empty, hopefully not, um, this will actually tell you that even if you get all the way down to the very bottom of your, your gas tank, um, this will tell you whether or not you're still within limits. So that gives you an empty weight, still with passengers, of course, but without, without any fuel, both your weight, moment, and center of gravity. Then you've got your max gross weight, as we talked about before. We're going to then subtract from that your takeoff weight, which is going to give you whether or not you're over and under. And you want it to be always under. If you see a positive sign there, that is, should be a warning to you that you are actually over your max gross weight for that plane and should take something out of your plane. Now what you're going to do is take the information that you have calculated here for your takeoff weight, landing weight, and empty weight, and enter it into this chart, which again I pulled from the POH, and you're just going to plot it on the graph. You're going to plot your takeoff weight and center, or 
and moment, as well as your landing weight and moment and your empty weight and moment. We're just going to give to you um, three dots that hopefully all should land within your normal category for utility if you're doing something like acrobatics. So that's basically how you use um, the weight and balance side of this chart. In addition, I've created a takeoff and landing, di landing distance sort of spreadsheet here that automatically in this cell or pulls in the data from the other side for your takeoff weight, so you don't have to enter that in, as well as your landing um, weight. It's also going to calculate it from the left side, what we've already calculated for the weight and balance. And as I said before, the yellow area is going to be the two um, places or the multiple places where you're going to have to enter in numbers in order for this to, to work. So what we're going to be doing here on the takeoff and landing distance is we're going to want to have our pressure altitude, well, excuse me, we're going to have we want our field elevation, our runway length, pressure altitude, temperature, and winds, both for our departing airport and our arriving airport. Then from there, we're going to use these charts, again, something I just pulled out of my POH, in order to determine whether or not we actually um, have enough runway to both take off and land on. So we would use both the, the weight as well as calculate our headwind. We would want to know whether or not we are, um, you know, what temperature as well as what pressure altitude we should be using, um, and then whether or not we need to clear a 50-foot obstacle. And then we do the same thing down here for the landing. I've also included a kind of crosswind component chart help with figuring out exactly what your headwinds, what number you should use for your headwinds. So that is the weight and balance um, checkout or cheat sheet that I used. I actually use ForeFlight for calculating weight and balance um, and I find it to be very useful, but I also use this as a backup. Um, I use this during my check ride and I found that the examiner thought it was a really great idea because it demonstrated that I actually really understood how to calculate it. And I was also using a tool like Excel to be able to double check my work, knowing that if I just did this by hand and wrote everything down on a piece of paper, then the likelihood of a user error is a lot, a lot higher. So this really made um, my flying a lot safer. So I hope you enjoy and I hope it's useful for you. Thanks.